Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you how I changed my cracked radiator in my 1997 Ford Ranger. To begin, I disconnected the negative terminal on the battery. Next, I drained the coolant out of the radiator. On the lower back right side of the radiator, you can loosen the pet cock to drain out the fluid. I ended up attaching a small rubber hose to make things a little bit cleaner. <laughs> You'll see in a little bit that that really didn't matter. Also, be sure to open up your radiator cap because it'll allow air to kind of get its way into the radiator and it'll make it drain faster. With the fluid drain, I next removed the lower radiator hose. There'll be some fluid left in the hose and in the in engine block. So it's probably a good idea to have some kitty litter handy to clean up any mess. Next, I remove the air intake assembly. You simply loosen the two bolts on the plastic shroud and you remove that. This will allow you to access the rest of the air intake by loosening up the clamp and the throttle body. Then you just unplug the sensors and breathing tube on the intake's body. With the air intake removed, you can access the upper hose and drain the remaining fluid out of the hose by disconnecting it. Since my truck is an automatic transmission, I have transmission cooling lines. Just take a 19mm wrench and a 16mm wrench to the smaller fitting to disconnect these. The bottom one is kind of a pain to unscrew because of the fan shrouds in the way. Next, I then remove the fan. And I'm sorry I really didn't show you how to do this. It's really just a pain to film that by yourself. But if you have a set of fan clutch wrenches, it's actually pretty easy. The fan is right hand threaded, so just basically turn it lefty loosey and then right to tighten it later. Now it's time to remove the radiator itself. And it's pretty easy. It's just held in by two bolts on the back of the radiator. Once these are removed, you can just simply lift it out. And you can see here where the crack is on the plastic on the front of my OEM radiator. Yeah, this needed to be replaced pretty quick to keep the truck cool and running. I then unboxed my replacement radiator. Now with supply chain shortages and everything kind of going on right now, I was actually lucky to find one on Amazon pretty quickly. I'll link it down in the description below. I first attached my new transmission cooling lines and I tightened these down a little bit later once it, the radiator was actually in the truck. The new radiator also came with a pet cock, so no need to replace that. And there's also old O-rings in there, so just keep the new one because it's probably better anyway. And I finally transferred the fan shroud from the old radiator assembly to the new one. And with that, it was time to drop the new radiator in. Getting the radiator and fan in together is a bit of a challenge and you wanna be sure that the fan is threaded back on without hitting the radiator, as then you can run into the possibility of bending the radiator fins. But once it's in place, you can bolt it back up and then proceed to attach everything back together.
Once you have everything back together, reconnect your negative terminal on your battery, and you're ready to fill up the radiator with coolant. Once you get the radiator topped off with coolant, be sure to burp the system and continue to top off your radiator until it's full. Your Ranger's engine will now stay nice and cool. And with that, you're done. It's a simple install that can be done in a couple hours and really on your own. Hope this guide helped you out. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more.